Does a voice of reason awaken in our gut the moment an opportunity arises that will put us in harm's way? Do we ask ourselves, am I thinking clearly? Is this a good decision? How will this affect my health or my family? My name's Lisa Montanaro, and my voice of reason had been buried upon layers and layers of distraction. Plenty of loved ones warned me, but I refused to listen. I could have, but I chose not to ever give myself time for self-reflection. I made friends easily, and I always managed to find a job and keep busy. I could keep going and going, and I never needed to stop and think. I ignored all of the signs. I ignored all of the facts. And then a bad decision was made. I was arrested in April of 2017 in a town in Wisconsin that I couldn't even pronounce the name of at the time. <laughs> but now, I will never forget it. Oconomowoc. I was arrested for being a party to a crime, possession with intent to sell marijuana. I didn't realize that in Wisconsin at the time, first-time marijuana offenders were being sentenced to prison. I had entered their state and was oblivious to their culture. In Wisconsin, I was considered a criminal. Meanwhile, in other parts of the United States, marijuana was being advertised on billboards. I was put in a cell without a phone call, and I repeatedly pressed the intercom begging for the guard's attention. At first, I tried to control my situation, but inevitably, I was in a constant state of panic. I would toss and turn at night, debating what to say to the judge upon my sentencing, replaying scenarios in my head, alternate universes in which I never stepped foot inside the state of Wisconsin. I was alone, humiliated in my cell, the concrete walls, the recycled air, the two-inch mattress. This was a situation that I could not ignore. I couldn't escape. The only way out was through. I thought spending that much time alone in a cell meant that I would lose sight of my freedom, that I would feel trapped and contained. But something inside of me responded to the locked doors. I couldn't plan a trip or change my career or do much of anything but meditate and reflect. I couldn't screw anything up with my ambitions. I found myself reconnecting to my writing. On the outside, I felt as if I never had enough time to read or write, and I remembered how much I loved to write as a little girl. For the first time in my restless life, I discovered this foreign feeling the feeling of being complete, the feeling that I've truly surrendered. I began to find ways to center myself amidst adversity. I began to realize that the real prison was the chaotic headspace I had created for myself. Of course, I needed an actual cell around me to let go and to focus. The sentence was 18 months in prison. Remember, this was a shifting time in the culture of marijuana legalization and reformation. The judge was disappointed that an educated woman without a substance abuse issue would commit a drug-related crime. He was comparing marijuana trafficking to heroin trafficking and referring to marijuana as the gateway drug. Meanwhile, in other parts of the United States, the term the gateway drug was taking on a whole new meaning, like the weed is legal in 60 miles billboard in New Haven, Connecticut, or the chill, it's legal here billboard outside of Seattle's airport. Perhaps if I had more money, if I had $20,000 to spend on lawyers, my sentencing would not have been as harsh. That's the reality we face in this country. Laws and punishments vary depending on what state or even county you're in and your financial status. I was given two choices. 
I could serve my full sentence, or I could serve some of my sentence and qualify for an early release boot camp program. I thought about how much money Americans spend on mental health and fitness programs and on spiritual retreats. I do not think that the prison reform system is fair or just, but I do think that I took my bad decision and my resulting incarceration, and after the initial shock wore down, I chose to see prison and even my boot camp offering as a gift. Even the two months I spent in solitary confinement, did I say two months? Two weeks. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um, even the two weeks I spent in solitary confinement, I realized there are those who would pay for that kind of isolation. I chose to go with the prison boot camp known as Challenge Incarceration Program. I figured if I had to spend the next year or so in prison, I would want to come back more equipped to society to be a stronger woman. Wisconsin's boot camp cuts recidivism rates in half. So after being accepted into boot camp, my hair was cut off, my uniform was issued, I was taught how to march, I memorized cadences, and I was made fun of for being a New Yorker. <laughs> if I would forget to ask permission to speak, if my eyes weren't looking in the right direction, if my hands weren't exactly at the position of attention, then there would be consequences. With this regimen, I was practicing mindfulness, because if I lost myself, I would lose my slowly accruing privileges, like an early release. I learned cause and effect because I had the time to look at each decision in my life and see its return. I realized that I didn't have to let everything in, that I didn't have to take everything personally, and that hurt people hurt people, especially the drill sergeants. I learned to ignore their bantering and simply observe when they were being cruel. I'm thankful because my prison sentence saved my life. And in the stillness, I became whole. Whereas before, all I felt was a hole. A hole I was looking to fill at any cost. I began validating my journey, loving myself from the inside, and not comparing myself to others. I worked through the shame of how impressionable I was before prison. It sounds like the result of expensive therapy, I know. <laughs> I'm thankful because my prison sentence saved my life. Remember, nobody has permission to enter your personal headspace. That space is for you and you are in control. I'm here to remind you to ask yourself, how am I feeling? How am I doing? Check in with yourself, often. Ask yourself, am I taking my freedom for granted? Are my eyes open? Am I awake? Am I listening? And if a bad decision is made, remember, those bad decisions can be wrapped up in lessons of personal growth if we choose to react to those bad decisions positively by taking those lessons and applying themselves to, to become better people, people capable of inner peace and people capable of loving each other more deeply. Thank you.